Well, good morning. It's great to see you. Welcome back to the shop where this morning we are going to go back and take the misting system off of the HVAC uh, condensing unit that and fan unit that we uh, put on a couple of months ago. It's been two full months. Uh, it's the end of the summer. It's time to take that apart. We're going to take a look and see how it fared and then we're going to compare some numbers. We're going to compare the system from last year when we didn't have a misting system on for those two months to this year when we did have the misting system working as well as the, the water usage. Uh, that was uh, always going to be a question and see you know see how we fared as well as you know how the uh, how the unit itself fared in, in terms of uh, you know how it held up. So let's go back and take a look. So here it is. This is the unit. Now we're just going to give it a quick uh, quick look around. I mean, I've been keeping an eye on it, so none of this is a surprise to me. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty good. I don't really see that it's any worse for the wear, um, and it certainly, I think, kept us cooler. But we'll let the numbers decide that when we take a look at the, uh, the energy usage and the water usage. We're going to start by taking these pieces off. We're going to take this cover off, disconnect the electric that's uh, attached to the, the thermostat wires coming to this, and then finally we'll disconnect the hose and we'll put it away for the winter. And then I'm gonna take this apart, give it a good cleaning, and uh, we'll take a closer look at see, seeing uh, if there's any anything that tells us that uh, that this misting system is detrimental to the health of, of the unit as a, as a whole. Be careful here, we don't snip the, snip the hose. But this is really what we're gonna be doing for the next 15 minutes or so. We'll let you see how we do a couple of these things, but. You don't really need to see all of them. Okay, I think that's the last one. Let's see if I can get at that. Yeah. This way. So we've got the power off, and we're going to take this cover off. Okay, put those screws right there. And now we're gonna disconnect these wires that we hooked up. They're gonna be these two right here. Come from that. And all we're gonna do is just take the red wire out and then put these caps back on. Two wires back down through here. And we know next spring when we set this thing up again that it's gonna be the two wires, the two yellow caps that uh, go to the that go to the thermostat signal. here. Probably should make sure that's off before I start. Well, we'll check with the water bill and see if that's accurate. Just let the numbers speak for themselves, I guess. I don't really have a, you know, an, an opinion. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I think it will. I could be wrong. We'll see. Just taking all these off. Okay, so there's the whole system off. All right, so with the misting system out of the way, we are going to uh, take this top off carefully, and then we're gonna take this grill off so we can get in and inspect these, these fins real carefully and clean them off. And while we got the top off, we're gonna check everything inside, make sure everything is tight and uh, well lubricated and cleaned out. So let's get going with that.
Okay, we got those screws out. We're gonna put these in a little container here so we don't lose them. And we're gonna stick them over here where they're out of the way and can't get knocked around and scattered everywhere. While we're at it, we're gonna do the same thing with this. Otherwise, we're gonna kick it, knock it, and uh, make a mess. So that's going there. Grab a cup of coffee here. All right, let's take this top off. Now, as we take this off, we want to be pretty careful with it. We just want to lean it a little bit. So this painter's extension pole is going to be perfect for that. Just so that it goes right, right like that. We're just going to leave that. Now, normally I wouldn't take this off, but I want to get a close look at it because, you know, one of the main comments, criticisms, concerns that I saw in the comments from prior videos when I was introducing this misting system was that I would end up leaving behind uh, mineral deposits that would clog up these uh, these fins and the condenser coil and uh, I would ruin the system. So I want to take a close look at it. It's been a couple of months. I don't see any sign of it here, just some dirt, but I want to take a closer look at it. And if I do see something, I want to be able to, you know, get at it a little bit while I still can. But at this point, I really don't see anything. But that's really why I'm taking it off. There's really no other reason to. You can typically clean these with, uh, with this grate on. All right, so we're going to use this coil clean. We're just going to give it a good spray all the way around. It says to let it sit for three to five minutes. I just want to take a real close look at this and see if I see any sign of any kind of mineral buildup and uh, as a result of water being evaporated off and leaving the minerals behind and I really don't I don't see anything at all um, there's just no sign of that so I'm real pleased with that and uh, like I said you know if there were any if there was a common thread in the thread, in the comment thread, it was that I was going to ruin my unit in no time at all by uh, by a mineral buildup that was going to be difficult, if not impossible, to remove. And the cost of fixing that would negate you know, any advantage that I had in energy savings. So I don't see any sign of that. I'm going to put this grate back on and button this thing back up. And then uh, we'll kind of end this video by taking a look at the numbers. Okay, friends, that's all buttoned up and the unit's back working again. I got it, everything, everything turned on. The breaker's in there. The uh, thermostat is back on and the unit's working fine. I don't hear any rattling or jiggling. So it looks like I put it together just fine. So again, the only reason I took this, this grate off, this grill off, was so that I could get up close and take a look at those fins make sure that there was there was no uh, mineral buildup on those no calcium buildup on those at all and i didn't see one iota of that now it's only been a couple of months but that's a good sign other than that you don't really need to take that grill off to do that cleaning that i told about you can spray through those things you can you can rinse it off through the grill and uh there's really no need to uh to take the grill off unless you've got one of those solid ones with the louvers and then you're going to have to get at it somehow or another but uh, so that's that let's get back in the shop and pull out the numbers and see if any of this made any difference at all in terms of reducing our energy consumption all right here we are back in the shop and it is time to compare the actual numbers you know as we as you may recall when we were setting this up we were testing uh, and we would take a look at the um, the the power draw without the misting system on and the power draw with the misting system on and compare the numbers and it looked like we were getting about an eight to ten percent reduction in power draw with the misting system on so that gave us some hope and also uh, we were taking a look at the, uh, the the temperature of the air coming out of the registers with uh, the misting system off and with the misting system on and it seemed like there was also a significant or at least a measurable difference of the temperature coming out 
colder with the misting system on than the misting system off, which would lead us to believe, at least in theory, that the system would run less, less often and certainly not as long as it would with the misting system off. So we had some hope there. But all of that aside, none of that makes any difference. Let's take a look at the numbers. And what I've done here is I've taken a look at August of 24 versus August of 25. August was the first month we had the misting system in place for a full month or the better part of a full month. And then I did the same thing for September. So let's take a look at August of 24. And last year, we used 2,100 total kilowatt hours. The average temp was 75. The days in the cycle were 33. So the average kilowatt hours used per day was 63.64. Now let's take a look at August of 25 this year, the first month that we had the misting system in place. In August of 2025, we had total kilowatt hours used of 2,180, so 80 more kilowatt hours. The average temperature was 77, so that sort of makes sense. The days in the cycle were 34 instead of 33, so that actually makes a little bit more sense as well. But when you do the math and you divide the total kilowatt hours used, by the number of days, you come up with a number that's higher, 64 kilowatt hours per day, 64.1 versus 63.64. So about half a kilowatt hour more per day in August of 2025 than in August of 2024. I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that the temperature on average was 2% or was 2 degrees higher, but one would expect, given what we were showing when we tested this putting in that we were drawing less power that we'd see some difference but really we don't um, i would call that a draw given that the temperature was a little higher but really no savings so let's move on to september of 2024 total kilowatt hours used was 1633 that makes sense it's september not august if we had 69 as our average temperature versus 75 days in the cycle were 30 and the average kilowatt hours per day were 54.43. All of that makes sense given the fact that kilowatt hours were less and the temperature was lower. But if we take a look at the total kilowatt hours used in 2025, it was 1625. So a little less. Okay, great, fine. The average temperature was 66, so a little less there. Maybe that's why that happened. The days in the cycle were actually 28, so two days less in the cycle. And if we average the days in the cycle by the total kilowatt hours used, we've got 58. That makes no sense at all. We actually increased our kilowatt hours used per day with the misting system in place than we did when the misting system wasn't in place. So it would seem, at least with a small sample size of two months, that the misting system, regardless of what our data told us in terms of drawing less uh, energy with the misting system on versus the misting system off when we set it up, uh, regardless of what that says, it would seem that it makes no difference at all. And maybe we're actually even using a little more power somewhere. Now, I will say this, my house is all electric. And so there are a lot of things that draw electric, but the heat pump and the air conditioner are really one of the bigger draws. The other big draw is going to be the water heater, the electric water heater. We're going to have an electric dryer. Our refrigerators draw a lot of power. But all of those things, really, we weren't using any more or less than we were using the year before. I'm going to continue to do this next year. I hopefully get a full season of that. and We'll have a larger sample size, but we'll see. And especially since I'm confident that we're not harming the unit by misting it. But, you know, that water costs money. So let's take a look at that. We've got our water use consumption. And same deal. We're looking at uh, for every thousand cubic feet used. That's how they measure the water here. And again, August of last year is going to be the same thing as August of this year. It's not going to be 30 days in a cycle versus 31. It's always going to be the same cycle from the 15th to the 15th of each month. So in August of 24, we used 1.1 thousand cubic feet. That's That M stands for 1,000. 1 1.1 thousand cubic feet versus 1.2 in 2025. So we actually used more in 2025. That I guess that makes sense because we had the misting system on. I mean, obviously there are other things we use we use water for for showers and for drinking and for you know just you know doing the doing the laundry. But we don't water the lawn. We don't do really any of that other extra stuff. So you know another hundred cubic feet, which is about 750 gallons. And another way to look at that is that's about seven or eight toilet flushes more per day. I don't think anybody had diarrhea all month 
and it was flushed in the toilet seven and a half or eight times more a day than they typically would. So the only thing I can really use to describe that is the misting system. It was using a lot more water than our little meter here was telling us that it was using. And then I go to September, and the same thing. We're using about 100 more cubic uh, feet of, of water usage in 2025 as we were in 2024, about 750 gallons per month more. And I only can really attribute that to the use of the misting system. That was the only thing that was, that was different, really. Um, now, the misting system, as you know, is automatic. It only goes on when, when the unit goes on. But still, you know, 750 you know, gallons is not a ton. Like I said, about seven you know, toilet flushes per day probably adds about 5 or $6 to the monthly bill. And I could put up with that if I was seeing a significant decrease in the electric usage, but I'm not. So I'm curious to see how this is going to play out next year. But for this year, I would call it, you know, a bust. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to close the door on it yet and throw all this equipment away. But, you know, it really did not turn out the way that I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to see a, a measurable difference in what we were drawing from the grid, and I just didn't see it. So that's a little bit disappointing. Now, next year, I've got a couple of other things in the planning stages. Number one, I think I'm going to try to put together some sort of cashment system that catches the rainwater coming off the roof and stores it, and we can use that instead of the, the water coming from, uh, from the city hookup. And the other thing is I'm tentatively planning on seeing if I can hook up some sort of solar power instead of drawing from the grid. So we'll see how that works out. But in the meantime, this is how it worked out. And uh, I'm very surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised, but I kind of expected that there would be no degradation in the unit itself. But I did expect to see some sort of decrease in our electric consumption, which I did not see. So that's an interesting conclusion. And speaking of conclusions, I think that's going to do it for this video. Folks, if you like this, please leave a comment. Be sure to like, subscribe. We'd love to have you subscribe on this thing. We're trying to get to 1,000 so we can get monetized. We'd certainly appreciate your support. And until the next one, we'll see you later.